It says in 3 John 1 verse 2, it says, Dear friends, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting, getting along well. Give God a hand. Listen, listen to this portion of Scripture. It speaks about your physical health. It speaks about we may it be well with your soul. Hallelujah. Pray, Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for destroying the enemy of my soul. The enemy of my soul. That devil and Satan and his demons. Hallelujah. This morning, Jesus wants to set many people free from parasitic spirits. Spirits is like parasites. Sometimes they feed on you. Get many funny, evil devil spirits. Many smaller ones than the one that we know as fallen angels, like parasites. They enter the bodies of people and, um, and, and, they, and they do many funny things to us. They cause us to become very sick and they live and they prey on us. It's the enemy of our soul. Pray, Lord Jesus. Set me free this morning from the enemy of my soul. Destroy the enemy of my soul in Jesus' name. Lord God, I submit to you this morning. I give you my body for good health. I give you my soul to prosper. My spirit belongs to you. I give you my all. Multiply my all this morning into a miraculous power. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, I give you my all. I know you will give me more than all. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a hand, please. So I'm going to read this to you again. Dear friends, I pray that you may enjoy good health. Say to God next to you, your good health is very important to God. So many people who are, consider themselves very spiritual say, oh, your body is not so important. Don't worry about your body. And your soul is the important one because your body is going to stay on this earth. And they, they mockingly say it's going to remain in the grave and so on and so on. I've got good news for you. The Bible says your body will be raised from the dead on the last day. You're going to be with that body that you sit in now forever, but in a glorified form, meaning you will not experience pain Hunger, difficulty, your body will be a spiritual, physical body. Say spiritual, physical body. So the Bible says in, in Thessalonians, the, um, uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit is praying there that we might, uh, that our bodies might be reserved, our whole being, spirit, soul, and body till the coming of Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, preserve my spirit. My whole spirit, my whole soul, and my whole body till you're coming. In Jesus' name. You say, how can I preserve my body? How can I protect my body? You know, your body, although it perishes, you know, it cannot bring forth a spiritual body if it, the body that you are now in is not sown. So one day, you will sow that body. God will sow the body that you live in. And, it's, and that same body will be raised from the dead in a glorified form. This is awesome. Jesus was taken to heaven with the same body that he was crucified with. That same body was raised from the dead. You need to understand that. Amen. In the meanwhile, look after your body. So God's prayer for us, the Holy Spirit's prayer is that we will be in good health. Say good health. And the second portion here is that your soul may prosper. Amen. Now, your soul can never prosper if your spirit is not doing what your spirit needs to do. It is your responsibility to make a choice to allow your spirit to take the lead in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To allow your spirit to take the lead. This is a choice that you make. In a household, a man's work might, can be difficult if the members of the household does not decide to allow the man to take the lead. I mean, people who are leaders, they are allowed by others to take the lead. If they are not allowed by others to take the lead, their leadership becomes difficult. In the same in a household. If the children and the wife does not allow the husband to take the lead, it might become a nightmare for that man. He might fight it off for a while, 
but eventually he will give up and he will just leave. So the first the wife allowed the husband to take the lead because she, because of her love and her respect for him, and because of the nature that God has given her. Say because of that nature. Now the nature of a woman, a godly woman, you get women and you get women and you get women. I mean. But all godly women should be like Sarah. A woman, a godly woman's nature is that of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the most submissive spirit in the whole, the most submissive person in the whole universe. The Holy Spirit is here this morning. But did you know, He will not do anything that I do not allow Him. Why me? Because He acknowledged the appointment of Jesus, that Jesus has appointed me, and Himself appointed me, as the leader on earth here. So He will respect my choice so i make it easy for the holy spirit to lead i make a choice that the holy spirit will lead fully and that he can do whatever he want to do in these meetings no matter what people say and this is where leaders get criticized and persecuted because when the holy spirit really start to do what he want to do a service is not the norm and the form that people are used to when they speak about religious meetings. It's in the same in a household. A wife can make it a nightmare for a man if she decides not to submit to him and make it difficult for him to lead. Some women even make up the children against the father. You know, that is, that is so strong witchcraft and so against God's word. But then in the same breath, I need to say, Men should, uh, should also gain respect so that it is more easy for the women and the children to allow him to lead. Hallelujah. That man can force down submission for some time, but after a while he will get tired. And after a while he will give up and he will just leave. So sometimes you wonder, why does men just leave households? You can criticize and judge them. But after a while, they realize that they have, do not have the right, and, and that the, the household does not really want him to be the man, so he'd rather leave. Satan so said, that is not good at all. So a woman and her children, especially a woman, because she takes the lead, should make it more easy for the man to lead. In today's society, they say it's a sexless society where men and women are equal. Men and women is equal. There was, no, was never ever not equal, not even in the Bible. Concerning salvation, give God a hand. Concerning salvation, men and women are equal. Concerning importance, men and women are equal. Concerning Value before God, men and women are equal. It was never, ever, not even in the Bible, different. So some people say, in the olden days, women had no rights. In the Bible times, they are lying. It's not to say if the Muslim woman does not have rights, that Christian or Jewish women had no rights. The Jewish men valued their women very highly. You look what Solomon wrote about an awesome woman in Proverbs 31. He valued a woman with great esteem. He, he valued a woman very highly. So don't believe the lie. I mean, but concerning role playing, there's a difference and you should never ignore it. If you ignore that, curses start to take hold of us. The Bible says, where women and children rule in a country, it's a sign that the country is already cursed. You are in the world. You cannot change the world around you. But when you live your life, you live it as far as possible according to God's word. I mean, I mean, you cannot change the world around you. You cannot change the system around you. But you can be in the world and you can make a difference. And when you're in the world and you're a woman and you have been placed in authority over men, remember the scripture where Paul is saying, and it's not Paul, it's the Holy Spirit himself, I do not allow a woman to exercise authority over a man. 
and I do not allow women to teach men. So when society and the new life order, whatever you want to call it, has placed you as a woman above men, as a Christian woman, you exercise the humility that is in Jesus available to you. And you acknowledge that man remembering that Jesus, the words of Holy Spirit. And I don't say you put him in your position. I say you respect him as, the, as a man. And you treat him as a man. And you honor him as a man. And God will take you far. Give God a hand. <laughs> to Christian women, I say never fight men. But stand your stand against ungodly men. I mean, don't fight men. But stand your stand against ungodly men. Say to a woman next to you, as a Christian woman, never fight men. But stand your stand against ungodly men. Even the one you are married to, give God a hand. If you're married to a man and your man mess up, you take your stand in Jesus' name. There's a false submission teaching also, I mean, where it says that the woman should sub submit to a man and everything. It's speaking there about Christian men and Christian women. And also one place about the woman that is saved and a man that is an unbeliever. Then the Bible says there, do not leave the man. But by your lifestyle, convince him the way that you are living is the right way. Maybe you will win him over. But if he chase you away, leave. If, 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 if that ungodly man chase away the Christian woman, don't worry, leave. If, a man, if a many men want to control their wives and control this witchcraft, you do not owe your wife. Your wife belongs to God first. Give God a hand. 